He's super fly. Is it true that most commercial cinemas only go down to 40 hertz? I don't believe it. I don't buy that. I don't buy that at all. I've seen some people say that, and I'm like, I don't know which ones you guys go to, but in Burbank, where I grew up, there all the studios are around there, right? So they have all the movies play at the AMCs there, and I used to work at AMC. Yep. <laughs> that was my my first job. They have a bunch of 18s in the front, right? <laughs> like if you go look under there, you're just like a bunch of 18s. Maybe even uh, crazier now, but like forty hertz. It's, there's, it's definitely getting down to twenty hertz in those theaters. Mm -hmm. I've done binaural recordings in some of the theaters, and I'm like, yeah, it's shaking. It's shaking. It's not. It's not forty hertz. So I don't know. Maybe in some cities, maybe those theaters only go, go down to forty hertz. But that sounds silly. That sounds silly to me. Yeah. I mean, would you want to go to a theater that only goes down to 40 hertz? Aren't your PA speakers, not, what'd you say, like 30 uh -huh. on your PA? I think so. Would you be happy to go to a theater that only went down that low, or would you expect a little more? I mean, mine are compact PAs that I just have a 12-inch woofer. If it has a 15, it's getting a little bit lower. You know, if it, if it was a theater, I would expect them to have 18s at least, right? Especially a big Dolby one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe... Maybe instead of home theater tours, everybody should be doing theater tours. <laughs> what system is in the theater? He said that's, individual, that's, the, that's the kind of tour I want to see. Okay, so Rev says individual speakers in the theater only need to hit 35 hertz. But how about the subs is what I'm talking about. There's the speakers that are on the wall, right? Okay. Yeah, not those speakers. They're big. Not They're still guys. big. Okay. But how about the speakers that are all the... like? There's nothing magical about the, their subwoofers versus our subwoofers. It's a huge auditorium. Yeah, big rectangular space. But the whole cool. front is like surface area, like cone surface area of woofers. I don't know what we're talking about. No, I don't know. You know, so that okay. So Rev says the LFE definitely goes below that. Okay. I, I don't understand where people are getting this number. It just doesn't make any sense. You're telling me you have a bunch of 18s in the front and like, ah, eh, we can barely hit. Viper uh, Viper says it sounds like they only go hit the thirties. <laughs> yeah, which, you know, tell me your theaters. Nashville, too, Nashville. Right? He says Nashville. Yeah, tell us your oh, theaters. No. I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look and see what um, AMC Burbank, Burbank, uh, speaker says. I'll, you know what? That would be a cool tour, huh? That would be an awesome tour. That's what I'm saying. Forget all these home theater tours, man. These things are just dime a dozen yeah. these days. Let's go, let's go to an actual theater. You get a tour there. Better yet, Joe, we should go and measure theaters with our toolkit and see what these theaters can actually do. That's mm -hmm. that's that. And then and then and then you just be like, and then we have a database of all mm -hmm. the Dolby theaters around the country. And mm -hmm. which ones are the best ones to go see your Dune 2, to go uh, see your Oppenheimer, to go watch your Dark Knight 15, you know, and uh, Mission Impossible 35. That's when that's those are the these are the these are the daily hi-fi approved theaters. That would be fucking dope. You know Damn, what it is? I, I see what it is, bro. Um, it looks like AMC switched to using uh, the monolith THX eight. Oh across the board. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 threw away the 18s. And they just went with, with the eights. <laughs> yeah, the eights. eights. And that's why they they sell and like they some shakers under your seats, and that's some, it. Some some butt kickers. That's it. That's what happened. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And some of those polks, those polk ones that everybody gets on the on Amazon that are like a hundred something. Bucks. Oh, the polks over the like hundred ten dollars or whatever. Yeah, that's what happened. Oh man, April Fools. April Fools. April Fools. Anyway, what, what you, guys you, guys wait, you guys were waiting on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, hit that. Uh, what do you guys say? Um, it would be nice 10 hertz. <laughs> uh, what LUFS target are you usually mixing to, Chana? Um, I am not mixing to um, Dolby. Dolby's negative 18, but that's if I'm delivering to a streaming service. Or any kind of other deliverable, like a movie or whatever. Um, for you guys, I just make it as loud as possible. So some of them are hitting like negative fourteen. My hard drive hooked up here. I can tell you right now. I think some of them hit like negative fourteen. 
Um, I know when I played one of these for Rock, he's like, oh, yeah, you you ain't worried about that negative 18 loss. I was like, no. <laughs> Not at, I started laughing. It was great. Uh, oh, no, these are these are for my new video. Oh, God, I don't even know if I want to make that video anymore. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, on my knees. The newest on my knees. Oh, that's the older one. Bounces. Let's see. New effects. March 25th, 2024. Okay. All right. I'm seeing. I'm understanding here. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. How about this? I'm still on this theater thing. Um, Cinema X curve. Negative 12. Looks like on this one. Negative 12.9. Something like that. Okay, so I think maybe what some people are referring to, because I see a lot of people are saying, uh, you know, it's like minus 10 dB, minus 6 dB at this. Okay, so I think here's the problem. I think these theaters need some magic beam. <laughs> yeah, probably. Because they're typically, this is the X curve. This is what's typically been used in commercial theaters. They kind of decided that this is the proper uh, curve that they should use in a theater. Look at it. Look at any of these. I'm not sure which one it's referring to, but it's all kind of the same thing where steep roll off, right? Uh, of the high frequencies, but then a roll off of the base frequencies. Why would you want to do that? I don't understand what the per you have. So I think what we're talking about is the capability of these subs. They're capable of doing 20. Whether they use a target curve that utilizes that 20 hertz, maybe not. Right? Maybe they decided, ah, this X curve that we decided on is the best because we decided on it like 30 years ago or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe that's what you're experiencing. Maybe. So, but definitely, I think that they're they're capable. I mean, they're 18s. So they should be able to mm -hmm. move, move some air. Erod, I've read that new Pro Tools software makes it much easier for sound mixers to beat. Make. Uh, beat. Make. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Beat I don't know, beat nine one six content. I don't know about mm -hmm. that. How long until they that consistently reaches Blu-ray and streaming? What do they? I, I saw that too. What do they do differently though? Like what what can they do in Pro Tools that you can't already do? No, I I think this is what what he's talking about is the um, integration of the Dolby Atmos render into Pro Tools. Just how Logic has an integrated one. I think that's what he. Oh, I see. Because I, I know right. people were saying in, on AVS, like, oh, now that they they allow 916, it's, you know, in Pro Tools, we should be getting better mixes. But I'm like, it didn't stop us from making 916 on... Nah, no, nah, you can... It's I, I think uh, there's more confusion. Uh, you know, I was saying a while back that, you know, maybe we should just have different mixes for different speaker configurations. Like we have a 512 for everybody that has like a sound bar or like the smallest Atmos mix uh, configuration. Then a 714 for the most popular and then 916 for all those early adopters. And essentially, Joe, exactly what you just said. Mm. I don't have to be monitoring in 916, but I can mix for 916. I can put something in the front wides. I can put something in the middle heights. There, It's all there. I know exactly where to place it. You know, Jeremy was that just asking. He's like, "Oh, it's, it's, uh, I saw." I told him. I told. I told Jeremy, Joe. Mm. Finally, I finally told somebody. Oh, Hold, holding the secret in for ages. Oh my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> I mean, all the Atmos mixers know. They know exactly where where to put the front wides. It's just the home theater community doesn't know that it's not fifty percent between the fronts and the surrounds. I'm still stuck on this twenty hertz home theater thing, man. I can't. Yeah, I, I feel like calling some old. Friends at the, that that may still work at the theaters, mm. you know, some old managers, and see if I can get in there and play some uh some pink noise, you know, play yeah, some. Let's go, dude. I'll, I'll, find let's out go. What, what they do. I'll go with you. I'll fun. go with you. I'll 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 we'll, I'll cause a distraction. You run in there. <laughs> we'll make a trip to Cali Audio <laughs> while we're in Burbank. Oh, dude, Cali! They just hit me up today. Lev just hit me up today. Yeah, so we'll do a few things, and then I'll but see. I'll know. give a call, and I'll see if I can. Hop in there and play some pink noise somehow. Yeah, let's do it. I think that's a great, a great idea, man. You know, that sucks if it if that's true. And I, you know, what I really believe is that they probably are using this X curve, this nasty, nasty curve, horrible 
bad curve. Uh, uh. No. I th- and I think that this was what Odyssey used to base their curve off of, like a modified X curve. Old people Old can't people take the lows. Nah, too bad. <laughs> they could not go to the theater. I even said nah. in my video, like, uh, you want they to see growth? They love it. Yeah. They just don't know. Old people love bass. Oh, look at this. Justin says, agree with Piper Boy. We hit the Opry Mills IMAX, and it's 70 millimeter, and yeah, it's just slacking and lacking. Yeah, Damn. man. That sucks. That's. I know uh, there are some IMAX theaters that are just loud. You know, mm-hmm. have you been to those where, like, at, um, I think it was City Walk? Mm. Well, I haven't been to that in ages. Well, just loud. Like, I remember being, I watched 300 there and being like, damn, it's just loud. Mm. Not even, like, not good sounding, just loud. I don't know. Whoa. I believe Pioneer used to have those X curve. And what their AVRs, Marv? What are you talking about? Hmm. I wonder who also works depends at on whether it's a good Atmos, a ground up Atmos installation, or rather it was a retrofitted from 5171. Yeah, that could be the case too. Imagine your home theater actually hits lower. Than the actual theaters? Oh, I'm sure a lot of people's do. Come on, man. I'm sure a lot of people's do. No, we watched that. We watched that new Hunger Games movie recently. New Hunger Games. Movie. Not newish, but you know, the not not newish, but the, the latest. Walking one. Jay, the part whatever. two, whatever. <laughs> the last one, dude. It was, it was bumping, man. It was Anywhere. like I think the difference between forty hertz in, and in, that, and it was your, like in the garage. No, in the actual theater. Oh, in the theater. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at my contact list here at AMC. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Let me, I'll, I know who to call. I'll see if, if he's still there. Oh, uh, looks like there are very few commercial theaters that are hitting 20 hertz at reference SPL in the seating position. The amount of X Max power and cone area do not. Doing that big room is expensive. Yeah, maybe. I mean, those are they. They are pretty huge. Let's see. Yeah, they're huge. They're huge, but I mean, <laughs> they're also a lot of surface area. You know what I mean? The ratio of room to surface area is, and the boxes oh. are huge. It's not like they have to worry about. Uh, yeah, you know, it's gonna make it look good. It's all behind this curtain, and the boxes are enormous back there. I know. I used to have to clean up the popcorn, and I'd always look back there and see. Damn, lots of subs. They're huge, huge enclosures. Uh, what does Reverend Slim do for a living? And when he, when is he starting a podcast? From <laughs> <laughs> uh, from a, a cost standpoint, it would be uh, cheaper to put butt kickers <laughs> and take it uh, below thirty-five. Yeah, I want to see somebody take a. See, Take look. some kind of measurement next time you're in the in a theater, oh, right? uh-huh. and see what your see which frequencies you're hitting. I'm also flat at 15 hertz at home, so maybe it's just most of us have something to compare it to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Many theaters only go to 35, but Meyer Sound has released new LFE that goes down to 20. Isn't that the one we we heard? A 21 inch, bro. That's what I'm saying. You see, remember that. That 21, was it 21 or 24? 21. 21. All right. Imagine that the subs behind those make that one look like a baby sub. Yeah. Right. That was a pretty big that sub. Was, that saw, was huge. Right? Yeah. That was huge. The ones yeah. that are behind this, they're way huger than that. Right. And can you imagine that thing not being able to like pump out a decent amount of bass? We heard it in that pretty big room. Yeah. It's like I 20 foot tall. That's pretty big. Yeah. That was one sub. That they yeah, were up, yeah. playing at a time. Remember the ceiling was super high. Yeah. Was there any issue playing like low frequencies? <laughs> no, not at all. Slam my it's chest cool. too. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I do system integration. I can say with confidence that room gain is is doing some heavy lifting in the theaters. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, Meyer and Bass Boss are the only commercial subs aside from Rotary Woofers that are hitting that twenty hertz mark. Base boss, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, one. you know, somebody, um, and on the on our, our, our other channel asked if we got the we went and got the base boss demo. I, mm-hmm. I saw some, I saw, I went and looked at him. 
I guess they're kind of in the same like ballpark as far as like sound quality up there with Myers. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that is true. Maybe if you sit in the corner of that room in the, in the, Every, so, so everybody in the theater wants to sit in the middle to see the, like the picture, but all the base heads are sitting in the corners. In the corner, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, oh, it was you. You were the guy. Oh, okay, get all that room game, awesome. huh? That's a secret. If you want to, just if you just love base, go sit in the corner. Go sit in the corner of the theater. <laughs> uh, so you know the base heads are at. So it was, it was, uh, it was Revive Creative that asked about um, if we saw the. Base Boss Demo at NAMM. Okay. Make sure to join us every Monday for our live stream at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily i